Ну что ж, продолжаем. International Conference for CCTV Registries and Registrants of CIS Central and Eastern Europe. Welcome to session six, uh, perhaps the most interesting uh, session of the whole conference. Uh, we have assembled here a panel of competent uh, organizations and we'll be talking about uh, the markets. We'll be talking about the current uh, trends around fishing mainly, and then we will also see whether the number of resources targeting users or specific marketplaces is growing, or maybe it's not growing. And then we'll talk about the uh, techniques used by uh, criminals, how easy it is to enter the market to the uh, new attackers. And uh, we will also discuss the methods of countering the attacks and crime. And maybe we'll organize a discussion on this topic in the second part of the session. Let me introduce our speakers. We've got with us Evgeny Pankov. He is leading projects at Coordination Center. We also have Kirill Miakishev, director of uh, information security at the Azon Marketplace. Dmitry Kirushkin is the uh, Bison uh, brand protection lead. Uh, Stanislav Goncharov represents FACT. He is business development director in the Department of Digital Risks. FACT is the same as uh, Group IB, actually, uh, formerly known as Group IB. And we are going to also have uh, uh, the representative of uh, large, large uh, uh, registrars, uh, Rusant and Raghuru, Marina Brig. So I suggest that uh, we start without further ado. The microphone goes to Evgeny Pankov and his statistics. Good afternoon, colleagues. Let's wait for the slides to appear on the screen. And in today's talk, I will share with you the statistics that we've been collecting through Domain Patrol. This is the project of the Coordination Center of the CCTLD.ru that aims at preventing and disrupting threats online. Uh, I will be uh, sharing with you some uh, phishing cases. And uh, somewhere around my last slide, I will pose a question that uh, perhaps will provoke a discussion. There are 12 competent organizations that cooperate with the CCTLD.ru uh, in the framework of the Domain Patrol. You know them very well, they need no introductions, and we as a registry um, sign a contract or an agreement with them in order to prevent and disrupt threats online. So under the rules, all uh, competent uh, organizations uh, have the right to send a uh, request or a complaint uh, to the registrar and then uh, the uh, domain will be suspended or delegated. Why phishing? Because in the last several years, phishing has uh, uh, become a leading trend and the volume of phishing grows year on year. Here you can see the main subcategories of phishing, including classical phishing, which uh, usually means uh, mailings, um, telephone phishing, V phishing, phishing, and then there is also complex uh, phishing, uh, which uh, <clears throat> uh, has started to, uh, which started to prevail around the end of 2019, and maybe today it's the most uh, common type of phishing these days. On the slides, I will have statistics for this year and the uh, last year. Here you can see the number for 2022. In 21, and in 2020, the number was much lower and fishing grew uh, at a rate of about 40% um, year on year. We see growth 
that by the end of 2022, in the fall of 22, uh, has accelerated. And at the bottom of this uh, diagram, you can see the percentages, uh, the percentages and, and the brands that are uh, the most likely targets of attacks. In uh, previous years, these brands uh, uh, share in the total number of attacks uh, was much lower, around 20-25%. This is data of 2022. This is the date uh, um, till August. And you can see the number is already higher than in the uh, previous year, and the percentages are also very high. Sometimes it's 85 percent. So there are no 10 or maybe 12 uh, top brands that come under attack uh, much more often than others. This is again uh, the same statistic by, statistics by brand. We saw a dramatic increase in the uh, volume of uh, complex uh, phishing since summer last year. Sberbank, Ozon, Blablac are booking and Alpha Bank are in the, the, the they make up the top five. Neither Avita nor Eula are in the top five, which is quite peculiar. This is data for 2023. You can see that Avita and Eula have uh, come under attack more prominently. Uh, what uh, the reasons are for this uh, growth? Well, maybe my colleagues are going to talk about it uh, more. I guess the reason is in the vulnerability of these sites and uh, uh, in the fact that the, uh, their sites are easy to penetrate. Even if you look at uh, Ozone in 2022, Ozone was uh, higher, its curve was higher than the curves of these brands. Now Ozone is going down, probably uh, Ozone worked with the users, uh, with the customers. As a, as a Navito customer myself, I can see that um, users do not have enough information how to behave under uh, various circumstances. These are growth percentages. Telegram uh, in 22, uh, there were very few uh, complaints. And again, we are looking at the domain patrol statistics. Let me remind you. Because there are other ways uh, to complain, uh, other channels of communication. But uh, here we can see um, grand growth. Yola and Avito, you can see that uh, they surged at the same time. Uh, Steam community and blah, blah, car uh, are displaying a negative trend. Uh, I remember the time when blah, blah, car around 2020, maybe 21, was one of the leaders. And now at the end of the year, blah, blah, car will be the only brand that will not uh, set a new record. As to the response time, at the end of 22, we faced a problem due to a large number of uh, requests. The system was not ready to accept that many tickets. And although at the end of 22, uh, the uh, average time of response was about 25 hours, in the first months of 23, here, yeah, you can see uh, how many of the complaints were processed within the first 12 hours, between 12 and 24 hours. You can see that 24 plus, um, that uh, percentage uh, prevailed over uh, 12 hours or 24 plus hours. But we um, worked hard, 
we analyzed the statistics and the decision was made to change the procedure already in May. We improved the domain system information system, domain patrol, sorry. And in the three months of the summer, we can see that uh, the share of the complaints handled within the first 12 hours uh, has uh, significantly increased. So the first, uh, without the first three months of the year, you will see that even compared to the previous year, we are doing much, much better. We are processing the claims much better. The average figure for the year will be around 26 hours, I guess, but um, uh, we are very happy uh, to have achieved those numbers, and we're also happy to meet with the response of the wrongdoers. You know, the fraudsters are worried, they are not happy at all. Uh, in fact, they are concerned about how quickly the registrars are responding and undelegating the domains. They generate phishing links, uh, but then uh, they uh, uh, see that the domain is no longer active. I read the communication of the fraudsters and I see that they are not happy, not happy at all. Now let's uh, consider different types of phishing. Uh, the telephone phishing is known as uh, vishing or voice phishing. The idea is uh, to uh, view the banking data from the users. The frauds dispose as representatives of Gosos Logi or uh, as representatives of banks and law enforcement authorities. I receive those calls myself. Very often they would be calling via messengers, more of, most often Facebook and, uh, well, uh, like Gososlugi or Spear Avatar would be uploaded to the profile, and of course this is already um, confusing, especially for the seniors. My parents uh, call me myself, and uh, uh, they, they complain that they are receiving those calls. Uh, uh, the um, uh, criminals, uh, they are smart people, often. They are quite ingenious. Uh, during the uh, zero station, I mean, uh, you all received calls from law enforcement authorities, from the police officers, and we know how to behave, but there is also the zero stage that they devised. Uh, it's funny because you are receiving a call either from a relative or from um, a colleague, and they say that, hey, you will be getting a call from a police officer in a minute. I don't have time to talk to you to explain everything, but please take that phone call and uh, um, answer their questions. Well, I would disregard such a request myself, but I think that many people will actually be misled by uh, this information if it comes from your colleague or someone you know. or. Sometimes uh, the fraudsters are already using uh, audio deepfakes uh, so that you can uh, you know, get a call from uh, your relative. Uh, um, people are fooled into thinking that they are receiving instructions from a trusted individual, from a mom or, or a friend or uh, children. And there are many, many people who get hooked on this. Um, uh, on this trick, but the idea is uh, eventually to get hold of the victim's uh, money. And this is another interesting scheme that's been progressing recently. Uh, well, recently, that means since uh, the start of the pandemic, uh, since 2019, when many people uh, went online and the fraudsters, of course, uh, abused uh, that online presence. Uh, a complex of phishing is when a domain name, usually a well-known brand, uh, becomes part of a large-scale phishing campaign. A link is generated 
and uh, the content is available for a limited period of time and it targets a specific victim. Usually they are customers of large marketplaces. How does it work? In the past, uh, special websites would be set up and the criminals would be exchanging experience there. They would explain to each other how to work with phishing, how to fool uh, the victim. Now things are, uh, have become much simpler. This is not a new scheme anymore, but I myself uh, encountered the scheme personally uh, by accident. I noticed that uh, the client writes to us, to the support and sends us uh, phishing uh, links. Uh, I've been, uh, you know, talking to this, I started talking to this person. I posed as someone who is not competent in this area and he said that, hey, um, it's uh, very long for me to explain everything. Let me send you a link to the chat bot and you'll uh, see uh, for yourself. So uh, again, um, you don't need to be an expert. It's all quite simple. You select a brand, you select who you're going to be, a seller or a buyer. Here, let's say that uh, we have a fraudster uh, who is uh, fooling a um, seller of a phone uh, at the Avito website. In the chatbot, uh, the fraudster selects a domain. And I see when, uh, I mean, the, these people are really worried when the domain names are no longer available. But okay, anyway, they will open up a new uh, domain. So, uh, as a fraudster, I enter my name. As a buyer, I enter the delivery address. Then a link is generated, a link to a product, and a link is generated, right? Then the fraudster uh, starts communicating with the seller, uh, asks the seller uh, to continue the dialogue in the messenger, and then in the messenger, the fraudster sends a link to the seller, the seller follows the link, and it says, Congratulations, you have uh, a buyer and the buyer has already paid for the product. So you enter your bank data and you click this receive button. And then you also see the chat if the seller has doubts. Uh, in the chat, they can uh, confirm that everything is uh, correct. Product. But if you go to the original Avito page, I mean, if uh, the seller is notified that the product is sold or if there is a, a buyer for the product, they, the Avito doesn't uh, offer a special messaging a window. Uh, no, it's, not, it's just not available. But here there is an event chat uh, and uh, you will be uh, you will be assured that uh, everything is uh, fine. And the uh, fraudster uh, will be uh, receiving information about every action taken by the sellers. At the fact, company website, you can find a, a good, a very good, a very detailed description of this scheme. So here, the seller uh, enters the banking details to collect the money and this the um, fraudster is notified via the chat. So uh, the uh, fraudster uh, receives not only the money, but also all the information on the credit card of the uh, victim. This is the statistics, it's the statistics that they uh, collect uh, throughout the day. This is how much they make in a day. There is a hierarchy who's making more, who's making less. Uh, uh, there is a top 10 uh, fraudsters, there is a rating, and they publish this information all the time. And for instant payments, 
they use bank accounts and phone numbers, all of them quite legitimate. And we know that uh, to open a bank account, you must produce a regional ID. So all, uh, all the people uh, whose IDs were used in uh, the process uh, might be implicated in the scams. Well, and this is the last slide that I mentioned, uh, the slide with a question mark. Everyone here, um, people in the room, uh, users, uh, coordinated registrars, uh, law enforcement uh, offices, we are all links in the same chain. What else can we do? So this is the question that I would like us to discuss during the session, how can we connect all the links in the chain? How can we make the life of uh, the criminals even more difficult? I'm an optimist. I understand that uh, fraud uh, is eternal, perhaps, but can we complicate things uh, for the fraudsters even further? Thank you. Thank you very much, Evgeny. It was very interesting. I have a question. Uh, maybe it's not a question for now, but uh, for later. But, uh, you know, if um, there is a newcomer to the fraud, fraud community, uh, if someone wants to join, w would they know they're joining the criminal activity? Well, I think they know. I think, I believe that, of course, they understand that what they are doing is illegal. Besides, uh, uh, there is a Philippines website uh, and also new GTLT domains are used to publish instructions, uh, you know, to brief every member of this uh, gang of fraudsters. Uh, they even share scripts, like, uh, um, what do you say? Uh, how do you behave? Of course, uh, these documents never say that um, now, from now on you become a member of a, a gang of fraudsters. Well, I would love to attend one of their conferences, would be quite curious. No, really, if you know how to read, you read the manual and then you'll be able to generate an, uh, a fraudulent link in just a minute and a half. I just wanted to test the manual and it worked. It took me a minute and a half. And besides, all the instructions on the manual are in Russian. Okay, thank you very much, Evgeny. Thanks. Very well. Then uh, let me give the floor to uh, the uh, representative of a marketplace, Kirill Mekishev from Ozon. I will share Ozon's perspective on fraud. Hi, hello everyone. Yes, I uh, wanted to explain how we uh, detect the scams and who uh, who helps us uh, fight those scams. And before I start, uh, let me offer uh, my uh, point of view uh, on the question that you asked. Uh, what is still missing? What can we do uh, to eradicate uh, fraud? Well, I agree that we'll ne never be able to eradicate it completely, but um, those people who work uh, in companies and to protect the companies from um, crime, I think what we can do is uh, to ensure that the cost of the attack is prohibitive, that is higher than any benefit or profit that can be obtained via this attack. So we must make phishing cost inefficient. We want uh, criminals to earn less than they are spending on uh, uh, setting up 
the air attacks. Ozone is uh, number one in mouse, more than 65 million people among all e-commerce uh, sites. At the end of July, we had 40 million active uh, buyers, more than 250,000 sellers, and more than 25 million clients at Ozone Bank. Those who opened the card and are paying uh, for goods at least at Ozone, maybe somewhere else too. What do we block and how do we do it? Stanislav and I, we published a big, um, well, uh, our two companies actually, we published a joint press release a couple of days ago um, and it concerned with the phishing sites that we blocked in 2023. There are three main categories of the blocked uh, assets. There are phishing sites, there are scam sites, and there are messages in messengers and uh, social media. The messages in messengers and social media are falling year on year. At the same time, there is 100 um, uh, times growth of a phishing websites. Now, uh, the explanation was provided in the previous presentation um, to set up a phishing site. I don't need to be an IT expert. I just need to go to a chat board, cl click a couple of buttons, and any housewife, uh, should she wish to do it, she can read the instruction in Russian and uh, um, uh, become a fisher. Um, you know, as uh, it's a, it's a, it's really a service uh, that you can use these days. The um, common fraud schemes. To the right, you can see screenshots from those uh, fraudulent websites. Well, um, to the right, actually, it's more like scam. It's uh, you are participating in a uh, prize drawing. You won win something. We we uh, carried out a survey among our customers in. In, uh, spring 2023, and this is the statistics. Every second respondent um, experienced fraud. Uh, one third of the Russians lost more than 5,000 rubles because of fraudsters, and 74% of the users at the same time are aware of the digital security rules. But if you compare the first two answers with the third answer, it means that some of those who knew, who were aware of the rules, um, still fell victim uh, to the criminals. It means that we as a marketplace and colleagues, as uh, the company providing online security, uh, government agencies and others, uh, we are not doing enough uh, to raise the uh, awareness. Uh, in the general public. Now, how do we do it? How do we uh, detect phishing? Uh, how do we counter it? Well, first of all, we uh, are uh, customers ourselves. That's to say, uh, we people working at Ozone and at other companies, we are uh, trying to do our own investigations. We are trying to discover those links in our information space ourselves. We also cooperate with our clients. We have an extensive customer support service and uh, every uh, complaint uh, related to fraud or a suspicion of fraud is uh, always uh, escalated to us. And then we will escalate uh, this uh, complaint, this report to colleagues. And then the colleagues will share it with uh, uh, the domain patrol. Again, we cooperate with colleagues from FACT and they use their own methods and tools to detect these resources in the internet. So what do we do? We block the websites for us. That means, you know, um, for us it would look like a block in the website, but for you uh, it means a comprehensive process of undelegation, maybe some other transactions too. What else is there? Well, as I was saying, our task is to make the cost of the attack prohibitive for the attack. Um, the cost of the attack will be high if uh, one-time pass passwords are used. Everyone knows what a, um, a two-factor authorization is, but it's a one-time password, really. 
uh, that you receive every time you answer a website or the marketplace or a bank or some other uh, entity. So a page that uh, offers only a login and a password uh, to hack this site is much easier than to hack a website uh, that offers uh, two-factor authorization. So you have to intercept the password and then enter it uh, on the real web page. So again, uh, to counter phishing, uh, it's important for us to switch our uh, uh, services, all of our services to Ozone ID. Ozone ID is the uh, service uh, that uses a one-time password. And of course, uh, we um, are engaged in outreach activities and we uh, try to raise the uh, information security awareness among our employees, among our colleagues, among our suppliers, among our customers, uh, everywhere. On the website, you can find a lot of materials, uh, papers, uh, um, entertainment materials even uh, on how to differentiate the real ozone site from a fake ozone uh, site. It's, uh, what phishing is, uh, how to uh, prevent phishing, etc. So we are communicating all this information to our customers and partners. Here are some examples. To the right, uh, you can see our website. Uh, there is gamification there. You have to take a guess where the real zone is and where uh, we are showing a fake ozone site. Then uh, you can see also the screenshots from our internal messengers. We are promoting, uh, you know, hygiene, you know, basic rules of uh, uh, information security. Uh, we are uh, educating our employees as to how to identify uh, phishing. It's especially important that the points of delivery, it's very important because uh, uh, lately we have seen a rise in the cases of uh, phishing that targets not our customers, but our employees who work at delivery points. So for us, the damage may uh, take the form of hijacking the account of our employee. So before we had Ozone ID in the interface of the um, uh, order handover, the uh, criminals would hijack our employees' profile uh, in order to intercept goods uh, or money, um, and we were we were losing stock. Really, we were losing the products. We were losing the goods because we uh, still have to pay the the actual seller who delivered the product to our point of delivery, and then we'll lose this product at the point of delivery. And those uh, digital fraudsters, they uh, become uh, not just digital, but physical fraudsters. Thank you. Thank you, Kirill. Well, this last message that you had, that was quite interesting. I have uh, like when when fraudsters uh, uh, convert from uh, online to offline, I have uh, a question about two-factor authorization. Those SMS, those text messages with the code, I'm not happy with them as a user. I would like, well, take, let's take Ozone as an example. I would like to use privacy ID of the code generator, right? I have, uh, I have it. I'm using it for Kentucky and other uh, places. There is um, two-factor authorization that I trust. So, what prevents you? Uh, do you think it will make uh, the uh, customer's life more difficult? Uh, what prevents you from uh, uh, implementing real 
uh, to factor authorization. Well, if you're asking about your TP, then yes, we had an internal discussion around that when we uh, did strategic planning of uh, uh, security of uh, ozone ID, we gave it a thought. We, we uh, asked ourselves whether one-time uh, TLTP password would be a good idea for our customers and partners, and we saw that the clients were not really interested. There are few people like you, very few. So we are not ready to invest. But as soon as, uh, like with this uh, two-factor authorization made the life of uh, the fraud more difficult, uh, the fraudsters will um, switch to a new technique. Um, they will start uh, sending out text messages. You know, it's very easy. It's virtual SIM cards now from a telecom operator. So maybe at the next uh, turn, on the curve, uh, the fraudsters will start sending out fake uh, text messages. Well, we, start, uh, we would try to um, align with big banks and other marketplaces in respect of this trend. Uh, today, uh, two-factor authorization is a golden standard. Well, this is a good answer. I accept it. Uh, will we be able to use TLTP uh, sometime in the future? Well, yes, probably will never become mandatory, though. And most of our users, our customers who are not very sophisticated in security matters, they will uh, stay with the current means of authorization and the fraudsters will work against them rather than those who made their own life uh, more difficult by using a more sophisticated method of security. Thank you very much. That was Kirill Megish from all on and now I'd like to invite our online participant to join the discussion and that's uh, Dmitry Kirushkin. He should be with us on Zoom. Dmitry is the head of um, a brand protection group uh, with Bizone. Well, I know that he was online. He's uh, not online now. Oh, we lost him. Can you please, uh, well, someone, can you please write to Dmitry? He's using the wrong link, I think. We'll just change the order of presentations. That's all right. Uh, then I'll give the floor to Stanislav Gonchirov from FACT. Yeah, sure. Wonderful. I'm glad I... Uh, have to uh, go first. It's uh, just that Evgeny's presentation was so detailed and it gave you a good idea of the scam and the scheme. And yesterday, colleagues from Ross Telecom also shared a lot of cases. Uh, thank God I only added one case, but not, it's a different one from the ones that you presented. Um, I also wanted to make another uh, remark uh, regarding the scam. Gangs. So again, thank you for reading our reports, and I recommend that everyone familiarize themselves uh, uh, on the reports with the report on the gangs. It's not a long paper; uh, it will take you three, five minutes, maybe, but you will be able to understand the scheme, the hierarchy. The hierarchy is quite extensive; it has about ten different uh, avenues, so in the, or roles. In addition to workers who do all the hard work, there is also also support. Uh, there are topic starters. There are those who develop uh, the uh, Telegram channels. There are also managers of scam groups. And there are more than 300 gangs like this uh, at the moment, if I'm not mistaken. And this uh, Kirill's joke about uh, housewives who can do it anytime. Well, this is exactly what happens. It's just that they are not usually housewives, mostly they are school children. And to answer a different question whether people understand that they become cyber criminals, well, not exactly. I think that they uh, believe themselves to be businessmen, young businessmen making money. So by the age of 20, they think that they will be uh, renting an apartment, Moscow City, and um, driving expensive sports cars. Anyway, 
fact, uh, fact uh, probably it's uh, not obvious for everyone. Uh, fact stands for fight against cybercrime technologies. Our uh, portfolio of products and services extends not only to classical cybersecurity and protecting corporate uh, infrastructure, but we are offering services to protect the internet users, to protect the brand of copyright holders and content. I'm a business development manager in fact, and uh, in my presentation, I'm going to share some statistics uh, on phishing in .ru and .rf. It's curious to compare uh, the statistics in different slides. Uh, we all have uh, some numbers and the numbers do differ, but the trends seem to be the same across all presentations. Here you can see the trend or the numbers rather between January and August this year in .ru and .rf zones. Uh, we responded to all these incidents, it's just that uh, when you compare this um, uh, against the uh, data in uh, press releases of uh, Ozone or Stolotol or other uh, rights holders, uh, we are sharing just the data on domains. They are domain only, not URLs. Uh, of course, if you count URLs, the numbers would be quite different. Here you can see about uh, 10,000 domains blocked uh, by us between January and August. Evgeny, uh, in his statistics, I think he quoted, what, 33,000 domains? 33,000? So one third of those uh, were blocked by, were referred to you by us. And uh, thanks to the domain patrol, we undelegated these domains successfully. The important thing is that they are these domains are all in the Russian domain zone and uh, they're all related to phishing. Why is this important? Well, there is also scam. There is scam. Uh, and we, we can't uh, uh, respond to scam uh, together with the domain patrol, and it's something that I would like to us to discuss at the end of the presentation as to who the victims are. Again, they are online services, delivery services, and financial institutions. It's the same top three. The statistics, the numbers change all the time, and uh, some of these um, industries uh, sometimes would go to the top, sometimes they will go down, but payment services and bookmakers, for instance, they are today somewhere at the bottom. So the school children, and not just the school children, they um, uh, follow a specific path. Uh, they, they do it knowingly. Uh, they understand that uh, the Russian brands participate in neighbor substitution, uh, um, replacing the foreign brands that left. They um, have become more attractive. And they are attracting now more customers in Russia and the CIS, and at the same time, they are the ones selected as victims. Um, they are the ones whose brands are abused and whose content is abused. If we talk about roughly 10,000 domains that were blocked in the .ru zone, well, in total, the Russian brands, and I'm talking about Russian brands, uh, we uh, saw about 200,000 phishing uh, sites uh, posing as um, famous Russian brands. In the .rf zone, I was trying to find this data before the presentation, and it was about 50 domains that I found. Uh, so less than 1% out of 5% of the total um, number of phishing pages detected. Now to the cases. Well, again, uh, my colleagues presented many of the um, cases, and um, I also recommend reading about those cases on our website in uh, our multiple reports. But in the um, out of the efficient domains, uh, a certain percentage targets uh, Telegram users, about 2,000 uh, domains uh, that we detected and blocked were targeting Telegram users. In June and July, there was a surge there because the attacks were related to voting. The, um, the voting, such as, uh, you know, uh, uh, my uh, niece is uh, participating in the Russian uh, competition uh, of music. Can you please support her? Uh, 
those who uh, follow the link will answer the mobile phone number and the codes that they will receive on Telegram. And this is how the uh, Telegram uh, channel or uh, profile is uh, hijacked. And then uh, the, uh, I'm sorry, what is it? Yes, they can they can uh, make uh, mailings in the name of this uh, person of this user. Uh, they all follow scripts. They all follow templates and all the uh, scams that were presented yesterday by Rostel and today by by Evgeny. They are all automated. You can. Uh, earn money without having to do much. Uh, the same uh, uh, fraud scheme uh, works not just in Telegram, but there is also an investment scam when people are invited to invest into a particular uh, project or the Wheel of Fortune and uh, gifts, awards, classic scam. Well, sometimes, I mean, uh, scam borders on phishing. Uh, by the way, uh, you you said, uh, Evgeny, that uh, it's it's possible to open a link. Uh, uh, at, uh, there was something about IP address oh, at a certain time. At a certain time, okay. So it's a time limited link, right? It expires. Always we see that people open certain addresses, for instance, uh, so that people of information security at Ozone wouldn't be able to see the link. There is a library that contains stop lists. Uh, and also, the stop list can be regional, and the regions can be not necessarily Russian. But for instance, the uh, the links would be active only in the region of Voronezh uh, after 7 p.m., targeting people aged 40 plus, um, you know, searching for something on Instagram. And to go back, oh, and to go back, right. Um, so to uh, go back to the slides, um, not only the accounts can be hijacked, but uh, people can be uh, added or contacts can be added to the groups or channels on Telegram if these users do not have certain privacy settings. If you uh, do not uh, prevent uh, third-party Telegram users to add you to groups, then this, uh, this is how you end up in those groups. Uh, in WhatsApp, we found this scheme. There were about 170 phishing resources detected in WhatsApp, but, WhatsApp, but um, the subject matter was slightly different. The School of Bali, uh, same here, it's a uh, vote, you uh, click uh, the button to vote, uh, you are uh, asked to be authorized via the messenger, you enter your data and you lose access to your account. Uh, the uh, uh, wrongdoers uh, do not limit themselves to all Russian competitions of music or ballet. It can be anything. So if you are uh, playing online games, then uh, you will be offered um, to get uh, a bonus game currency or an additional account or some uh, game assets. If you are a lonely young man, uh, you will be shown photographs of young ladies. And to uh, get, get in touch with those ladies, you will have to answer your phone number or something. So uh, uh, either there is emotional appeal or informational uh, appeal uh, in these uh, messages and these hooks, Leo's. So for every um, user, uh, there will, will be a phishing page. Uh, um, be careful. Uh, 
строгой гигиене, там по порядку. Uh, it was it was interesting to see in the previous presentation that 74 percent of the uh, ozone customers said that they were digitally uh, literate. Uh, well, probably they all had negative experience, and this is why now they consider this, themselves to be competent in matters of information security, and they understand the value of two-factor authorization and changing the passwords and protecting the family members. Uh, this is bringing me to the end of my presentation, but uh, I'd like to use this opportunity and um, uh, offer another topic for a discussion. So what do we do next? Uh, fishing borders on scam. Yeah, well, first of all, thank you for uh, the opportunity to talk here, uh, right, uh, to voice this uh, a pro proposal, I uh, call upon all uh, hosting providers and operators well, to think about security of your business, not just protecting it with the IS uh, products, but to protect your users and customers uh, through verification, perhaps, or some means of control. You know, there are registrars or hosting providers uh, who um, are in our anti-ratings uh, who are uh, up to 80% of their users uh, are scammers. Mm. So I suggest that maybe we um, draft a memorandum of understanding to exchange information. We are ready to share the information. We do not request anything back or in exchange. Please listen to us, hear what we are saying. I think we've established our name in the Russian market already, and we are a trusted data provider. So uh, just please uh, take this feed from us, the information about the scammers that we have and uh, their activity in your, uh, on your domains uh, or in your, uh, on your host. We are not asking for anything in exchange, just take heed of it, um, you know, pay attention to it and implement procedures and means of protection. Um, follow the example of our cooperation with the coordination center, the domain patrol. Uh, we already have signed such agreements with some hosting providers and even several registrars. So if you are thinking about it, and yesterday there were many discussions about new registrars uh, and new users, uh, the complaints of the new users of registrars. Um, the users don't want uh, much hassle, they want, don't want to share personal data. Well, if you agree uh, to those terms, then you will be setting the ground for the criminals. And if you're thinking about simplifying the rules for your users, uh, remember about security uh, not to be uh, uh, not to be a leader in the anti-rating. Uh, I guess um, uh, th th that's everything I wanted to uh, talk about today. I will be happy to continue our discussions offline, offline as well. I'd like to thank all the offline listeners. Again, you know how to contact us. You can find us uh, or reach to us via CCTLD as well. Um, let's make the .ru.rf zone safer. All right, we have two questions uh, from the floor. Andrei Romanov? Yes, hello, and thank you for your interesting presentation. Your website says, we prevent and we investigate. Well, uh, your presentation focused on prevention, but my question is about investigation. How efficient uh, are your investigations? Can you protect the resources? through an investigation? Can you bring uh, the criminals to justice? Right, thank you very much for the question. Well, um, for us it all started with investigations about 20 years ago. That's how we acquired our expertise. First, we investigated cybercrime, and then based on the acquired knowledge, we built products to prevent crime. So, uh, in fact, we recommend it 
to the rights owners uh, to investigate every single case of cybercrime, and many rights owners are already very interested in doing that. I understand that you, um, not every investigation can be productive. Like, um, there is, say, full anonymization, right? Some uh, anonymize themselves very well, others don't. Uh, so it depends on the uh, quality of uh, anonymization. In our investigations, we also uh, observe, uh, you know, gangs of criminals or individual uh, perpetrators. We are tracing their mistakes to get uh, uh, access uh, to their profiles, to de-anonymize them, to collect evidence for the law enforcement authorities. We are a for-profit organization, so we can't uh, investigate every single cyber crime. We don't have enough resources. That's why we have to share our information with uh, the law enforcement agencies. But again, if anyone is interested, we are willing to share the data and the information and together with the uh, law enforcement agencies, uh, we can carry out uh, a, a, an investigation. Well, there are many cases. We have um, a blog at our website and can read about our investigations there. Uh, I just wanted to clarify my question. Kirill said that uh, the uh, fraudsters, uh, they're switching from online to offline. They're becoming like physical fraudsters. Uh, when the goods are, or the money is handed over to individuals, so you can capture that person, can't you? Well, you see, uh, the cases are different. In offline, probably you have more opportunities. Uh, but yes, why not? I mean, we had uh, experience like that. We helped capture an actual criminal. That happened when Group IB had presence in Russia and the CIS. We uh, had, uh, like, we carried out a joint, we participated in the capturing uh, CDN pirates. And these people were apprehended. They were apprehended. Kirill wants to add something. Well, uh, to capture the person who came to the point of delivery to collect the product or the money it seems to be much easier uh, than finding the person somewhere online. But Stanislav said that uh, there is a hierarchy in this business, criminal business, and unfortunately the person who comes to collect the money or the product in the real world uh, most likely doesn't know anything about uh, the person who designed the phishing site and the designer of the phishing site doesn't know the person who used it. So there are three different people who know absolutely nothing about each other and uh, they are invisible for each other really. We are uh, making the attempts uh, to uncover the full scheme uh, and apprehend uh, the criminals in the real world, uh, but very often uh, the, uh, the, the the soldier, well, is not a, a general. The soldiers do not know and have never met generals. The drops. Irina Danelia. Stanislav, uh, so Telegram hijacking the Telegram channel, what do domains have to do with it? Oh, domains. Uh, you have to click the link. And uh, Telegram is used to authorize the user at the link. So every time there is a vote on Telegram, there is a link, a final link, and that we uh, communicated such um, abuses uh, to um, domain patrol, uh, where the link would be like Telegram.rf, for instance. 
they create those links to hijack uh, or the name of the competition there is a dot and an i then and dot are you so the uh, instrument the, but the telegram is uh, a means of uh, propagating the link the phishing link yes it's a communication channel that can be easily automated we are saying that the fraudsters are uh, trying to automate and um make the their schemes less expensive you can do a mass mailing there is artificial intelligence that they're using now a simple machine that can be attached to this you know to, to dialogue to to communicate in a dialogue with the victim and they are sending out links uh, to the fake uh, websites uh, fake websites presenting as our website or a marketplace website or a uh, national competition website so in phishing you need to have a web page and the web page must have a domain that is similar or looks similar to the domain of a real marketplace that's why we're here right thank you now let's give the floor to our online participants Dmitry Kiryushkin from Baizo Dmitry, we can see you, we can hear you. Good that you are with us. Yeah, great, great. So you, you, you are saying that you can hear me? Good, good, excellent. So, uh, well, first of all, I would like to participate in this discussion that you are having. This last question, uh, you know, the people who are you know conversing from online to offline when the individuals are coming like drops or soldiers uh, like mules they didn't know that it was a, a scam or they uh, see that you just you know they, they know that uh, you can get a product at half price and to do this uh, you just show a QR code and that, that's it and they are the that happened before that as to School children and uh, housewives, I agree with the colleagues that the uh, entry threshold to design a web page and uh, equipping it with automation uh, is now extremely low. Everything is automated now and uh, many of the routine tasks have already been automated, like generating a phishing page, generating a unique link, etc., etc. So again, the threshold, the entry threshold is uh, at all time low. All uh, you have to know is how to use Telegram and click two buttons in the Telegram bot. Okay, um, sorry, that was a, a, um, a an aside. Uh, but uh, now let's uh, turn to the presentation. I'll introduce myself again. My name is Dmitry Kirushki and I'm head of the Reputation Analysis Department at Bizone. And today I wanted to talk about the cases of uh, domain uh, hijacking to place phishing content on the domains. Now, this is Bizone statistics. In the last year, we analyzed with Bison brand protection, we analyzed uh, 925 database leaks. One of the trends we detected is that per every 100 employees of any company in those data leaks, you can find about 10 pairs of uh, corporate logins and passwords. So uh, there's an employee of a company uh, registers uh, the corporate uh, with a corporate account uh, at some uh, social media page. There is a leak from the social media page. And unfortunately, since people use the same passwords everywhere on all their services, so you may think that um, that's uh, uh, social media leak has nothing to do with a particular corporation, but uh, the passwords are leaked and it's the same password as uh, um, employees using insights of uh, uh, the corporations. So this is a huge threat to banks, uh, companies, all kinds of organizations. So I suggest that you use different passwords or a password manager, not to have repeated um, passwords password manager solves this issue and the second uh, thing on the number of phishing pages last year we detected and blocked more than 110,000 phishing resources that targeted uh, third-party um, 
customers. And another thing is, uh, if a company has a personal account for the users on 70% of cases, and there is a phishing percent probability that uh, the company will have a fake or a phishing page in the internet. Now, uh, to hijacking, what happened? So uh, we keep blocking phishing websites, but the owners, the domain owners or holders, they come to us and they say that it got nothing to do with them. Uh, they had an educational portal there or an e-commerce store, but now we accuse them of phishing, but they have nothing to do with phishing. Uh, we are wrong. We start investigating and it turns out that uh, the criminals the criminals under certain circumstances will be able to place their own content and uh, in our case that would be phishing content at uh, domains that they do not hold from the start of 23 we found more than 600 resources like that we blocked them the domain owners came to us uh, with a request to investigate and we found out that that's that's what's happening now, more specifically, how did it look like for the domain holder? The domain holder uh, buys a domain, places something on the domain, and doesn't uh, uh, doesn't uh, extend uh, the payment for the services of the hosting provider. The record is still there, but uh, the domain is not paid for. The uh, criminals find this misconfigured domains and under certain circumstances they will be able to hijack or rather to police the phishing content um, at the domains that they do not own. We found those phishing domains, we blocked them. And I wanted to thank the domain patrol once again uh, for allowing us to block the phishing domains in Brunette very quickly. After we blocked the domains, we received, uh, we were contacted by the owners of those domains because they were not aware that uh, the domains hosted something. So they thought that uh, they were old, outdated, well, were holding something legitimate, but um, the criminals placed phishing content on those domains. That's how uh, those 600 domains uh, looked like. Basically, it's some, some phishing page. Uh, there is nothing new in this uh, scheme. Um, it's an old scheme. And I remember reading about domain hijacking back in 2021. Uh, but unfortunately, the users can still be tricked. Again, um, either the hosting services on uh, this contract is not renewed, um, or there's another vulnerability. Colleagues from uh, uh, registrars prepared an article and uh, they explained what needs to be done so that your domain cannot be hijacked. Our colleagues, the coordination center, we all keep talking about, unfortunately, the users can still be tricked and they still lose their domains. More than 600 domains were hijacked uh, from uh, during 2023. I, I, I see that um, uh, there is uh, still some time left. Good, good. Now, um, on uh, how money can be stolen with phishing pages. Evgeny has explained in his presentation how, how um, the gangs, uh, uh, Telegram gangs, operate. We uh, studied that scheme uh, that he presented, and uh, we, uh, we we wanted to know how much money these scammers can steal. We found about 20 gangs like that, and on average, a scam uh, gang can steal as much as 100,000 rubles. That means 2 million stolen a day per 20 teams, so uh, that's a lot of money. 
you know, that's that's just you know uh, the profit of one day. The uh, entry threshold uh, is uh, almost non-existent. It's down to zero. I mean, you can use phishing to uh, fool victims. Uh, all you have to do is join the Telegram chat, um, and you can get all the detailed uh, menus, uh, which uh, products sell best, uh, what photographs you should be using. Uh, when the uh, phishing link should be sent to the potential victim on day one, on day two, etc., etc. The, the uh, manuals are very, very detailed. I agree with colleagues. Uh, now, uh, with respect to end users, uh, those who are uh, generating these links uh, and they are communicating with the, the victims, they are often school kids or students. They uh, may never have heard about domains or DNS records. They uh, may not have a single idea of how internet works. Uh, all they have to do is to know how to press two buttons in a Telegram bot and everything else is uh, done for them. A unique link will be generated, link will be hard to detect, it will have a unique URL. As Evgeny was saying, uh, the uh, link will be valid for a specified period of time. After a while, you will not be able to get access to this phishing contact, even if you have a link. So this is high-level phishing, but it doesn't require any skills at all. So that was our estimate of the uh, value of thefts using phishing in Telegram. And we also wanted to understand uh, what's the minimal uh, like threshold, what's the minimal value, what's the minimal cost uh, for the criminals to set up a phishing page. Criminals are smart, they know how to count money, and they create phishing pages to earn money and to make more money than they're going to invest into maintaining their infrastructures. So uh, we tried to compute how much money the criminals are spending on maintenance of their infrastructure. Uh, now, in terms of the costs, they need to pay um, to register the domain. They can hijack a domain, and then it means that they're saving on the domain registration. Then there is hosting services, then there is Cloudflare, there is an anonymizer services, uh, VPN, VPS services. Uh, SSL is free, but you need time to um, attach it. Uh, various infrastructure uh, support and advertising. Uh, in, in our experience, advertising is one of the more expensive items. So on average, uh, we are looking at five to seven thousand of rubles to set up and maintain one phishing domain. And advertising, again, is one of the most expensive items on the list. And the fraudsters, in order to, uh, to um, uh, even now, the costs and profits, they need to make at least 7,000 a day. If you multiply that by the number of phishing cases that our colleagues and I uh, and us, uh, we uh, detect, uh, it means that uh, we are looking at hundreds of millions of rubles a year that uh, the criminals still using fake pages. Uh, again, sorry for this um, aside. But uh, to finish the story about the domain high checking, what are the recommendations that we can give to our users? Well, first of all, if you own a domain and you place some content there before, but you no longer pay for the services of the hosting provider, please remove all your uh, DNS records. Or uh, there should be no NS records before uh, you uh, associate your domain with a hosting account. It's a simple thing to do, but many people are neglected. And already from the start of the year, we confirmed at least 600 cases of uh, domain hijacking. That's it from me. If you have any questions, uh, I'm still here. Yes, sure, Irina Donelli has a question from the floor. Thank you, Dmitry. Good afternoon. Um, mine is not a question, rather than a, rather a comment. 
I guess about 18 months ago, I noticed in the international discussions too, uh, the discussions around uh, fishing and countering the threat that uh, uh, there is a differentiation between the uh, domains uh, compromised and uh, uh, maliciously registered domains. I think that we have very few hijacked domains or compromised domains. domains. Uh, we uh, do not have a methodology of counting them, but still even looking at the number of domains uh, uh, for which delegation was restored, it's around a percent. Uh, your numbers confirm that 600 versus 30,000, for instance. But this year I saw the uh, DNS Abuse Institute data, maybe you're familiar with this organization, and they keep their own statistics on malicious domains, including the domains in the .ru zone. And then numbers in the number of compromised or hijacked uh, domains are much higher than I was expecting. I don't have the numbers in front of me right now, but uh, it was like 10, maybe 15 percent. It's different order of magnitude. Uh, for me, it was a surprise. I think that it's something that's uh, worth thinking about. Thank you. Sure. I would like to comment this too. Uh, the statistics that I showed uh, there, uh, that's uh, just one template of a phishing page, right? The, the, only those domains, we, we counted uh, at least 600 domains that follow the same uh, template as to how many domains can be hijacked in general, in theory, uh, that meet their conditions. Uh, we found about 30,000 domains, uh, suitable domains or eligible domains uh, last year. I don't remember whether they were domains just in the .ru zone or maybe uh, global but I remember this number around 30,000, but 600 is just the hijacked domain confirmed with domain patrol num uh, data, but most likely there are more, many more of them, in fact. Thank you, colleagues. We have another question from the floor. Uh, hello, Dmitry. Um, do you find domain patrol easy to use? Yes. Very well. Uh, do you remember that there is a provision in the rules on uh, competent authorities, competent organizations? Do you mean item 5.7 that the registrar has the right to undelegate? Yes, but what kind of request? Uh, the registrar should receive what kind of request? Well, if I'm not mistaken, there should be a request coming from the competent organization confirming that there is sufficient content on the website. Well, no, not exactly, not exactly. Uh, you see, the um, request should be grounded. Why uh, do you make registrars uh, spend the uh, time on investigating your complaints or your request? You just state uh, that according to your data it's fishing, but you do not provide any evidence. Well, if I'm not mistaken, competent organizations uh, determine whether it's fishing or not. That's why they're competent. So if the competent organization informs you that it's decided that the website is a phishing website, so th that's the idea. Well, actually, I agree with Dmitry. That's why a competent organization is a competent organization. It decides whether it's phishing or not. Well, in case of IP, you provide a lot of evidence. but. No, no, I'm not sure I understand your question. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Well, you see, we received requests from you. Like, this is a phishing website, undelegate, period. Is this okay? We go to the website, there is no phishing. We can't confirm that there is phishing. The website 
uh, Apple, we, we wrote back to you, but we never received uh, a response. One of the latest claims like we received, a phishing, such and such domain, undelegate. Why not provide us with more explanations? There is phishing. Phishing looks like this. The phishing targets such and such audience. This is the website, contact us, Bank, whatever. So we can test it, so we can check it, so we can be held responsible for our actions, so that we uh, take a grounded decision, an informed decision to undelegate. Well, if there are specific questions, then I, I suggest that you contact me uh, directly. Uh, and we will discuss additional evidence in specific cases. And uh, you say that um, it's not, well, you're asking um, us to identify the specific target audience. Well, it's not always possible. The screen that I showed you in the screenshot in my presentation is, it's just as, uh, and uh, uh, your credit card number to make a payment. We don't know. Oh, all right, all right, but show us the link to this form that needs to be filled out. Well, usually that's what we disclose. That's that's what we send. No, 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 and no, and no again. No. Evgeny Pankov also wants to comment that uh, he is a conflict uh, resolution manager. Yes, we talked about it uh, with Sergey yesterday. I showed uh, him cases, and in that example, uh, there was an attachment with a picture and with a link. And then Ilya said that, okay, I uh, didn't notice that, and so that domain was undelegated. But I will also agree with uh, Ilya, and I'm going to raise this matter during the meeting of registrants and competent organizations in November. It would be best if uh, the competent authorities would use the same template uh, for all cases, uh, well, for reporting cases to the registrars. And as to data ref, you remember I contacted you and I explained why we couldn't delegate data ref. I agree, I agree, I agree. Well, it was a different request. It was a different report. Okay, 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 okay. We'll 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 fix it. We'll fix it. And yeah, we have one more presentation. Okay, and and then if there is time left, we will organize a discussion. But there is one more presentation ahead of us. Uh, besides. Uh, there is the comment from uh, Maxim uh, that we, it would be best if um, everyone would use the same same template. So during the next meeting, uh, we will include this item uh, onto the agenda. And now I would like to invite Marina Brick from Rusenta to take the floor. Uh, thanks to Ilya, we can now uh, take a perspective of the registrars uh, on this matter. Marina? Yes, hello, and thank you for inviting me here. I was asked to um, explain what's happening inside Rack Rule and Rule Center whenever we receive uh, requests. Uh, uh, our function is quite straightforward. We need to stop uh, or disrupt the um, abuse. We uh, process uh, the request related to domains and hosting. Different uh, stakeholders uh, contact us. We work not only with competent organizations, yeah, so um, we either um, put a stop uh, to this abuse or we um, respond in a different way. I'll explain what, what that means a bit later. Uh, from the start of the year, we received 160,000 um, uh, reports. 
наших сотрудников. Ради интереса, значит, госорганы присылают. Присылают. Uh, containing up to 5,000 uh, domains in one request, for instance. Uh, we have only eight employees at uh, our organization to process the request, and again, 14% uh, and of all requests uh, coming to rules and 9% requests coming to reg.ru are uh, coming from the government authorities. Um, so we are helping uh, the law enforcement authorities, the judicial authorities, uh, to put an end to this crime. Hosting. Uh, we have four people at Regru and Rusant uh, processing these requests. 8,000 requests per month at Regru are coming from hosting providers. And there is, sometimes it's uh, copyright, sometimes it's malware. Copyright goes to the lawyers, that's one track. Malware is analyzed. If it's spam, then uh, email is uh, blocked. Uh, if uh, the customer account is hacked, then there will be one track of communication with the legitimate user. If we see certain patterns of behavior, similar patterns of behavior, we uh, begin to block and prevent ordering new services to be used in some criminal activity. And the domain patrol, we have five people um, assigned to domain patrol at Rue Center. We're receiving only 250 requests from domain patrol. These are averages for the year and 3,000 at Reg Rue in August up to 25%. Uh, was the share of uh, domain patrol requests in the total number of requests. And the flow is as follows. If necessary, we send a request to the competent organization to uh, disable the domain. Then we will uh, run an additional check via the security service. We delegate, we inform the administrator, uh, the registrant, and we start the process of identification. Very few uh, users come back to us uh, to uh, restore the delegation. So what are the main problems or challenges that we encounter? Given our workload, and I'm not uh, yet counting the August uh, request from the CCTLD, uh, well, the challenges that we face is duplication of requests, for instance, uh, or the same request of repeated by the same organization or errors in determining the registrar or delays in getting the information. How did I close the presentation? It doesn't matter. Anyway. Ah, okay. <laughs> oh, okay, got it. Anyway. Can you open the last slide, please? No, the next one. Okay, good. A uh, registrant uh, registered a domain. On the next day, we get a request to uh, disable this domain, which is parked. Our employees have a lot of work on their hands. The um, employee disables the domain, and we get feedback. What happened? I'm a, a registrant. I'm a, all legal and legitimate. And then, yes, and for 30 days, this domain was not delegated. It has a new uh, registrant. The domain is parked. You can't do anything with the Spark domain. We received a request from a competent organization to disable it. Um, we investigated the case. So yes, the crime happened in July, and we received this request in the end of August. So, the, again, 15 people, 160,000 requests. We are looking for more work to do. 
несмотря на то, какие слова сегодня произносили, нас ожидает uh, увеличение нагрузки. Well, uh, it looks like uh, uh, we will have we will have a lot of work to do in the future, judging by everything that's happening, judging by the trends that were um, discussed today. So, yeah, I can see that it can be a human error, but uh, the competent organization is uh, as overloaded as you are. They also need to investigate all the incidents. Again, this August uh, uh, report or request from the law enforcement authorities that came to the coordination center and then we distributed it uh, uh, across uh, re registrars. I have a question. Yes. Uh, and maybe it, it's um, not on the topic, but can we go a couple slides back? Yes, this one. Is my understanding correct that when you receive, it was okay. So when you receive a report or a request, uh, you are uh, uh, checking for malware or copyright violation and you use your internal expertise. Uh, right? You are using your own expertise both for copyright violations and uh, malware. You aren't uh, engaging uh, third parties, uh, third party experts, independent experts. If colleagues from FACTS uh, have already confirmed that there is a violation, can you speed up there? Can you automate it? If the request comes with uh, a verification from, say, FACTS, if you trust them, well, in case of hosting, you see, we are looking for the uh, root cause. Was the customer hacked or is it a, a real criminal? Well, as um, a consumer, as a, as a consumer, really, I, I would like the response time to be very short. I can see your workflow. I've listened to your discussion on standardizing the templates and everything, but Okay, even if there is a single template and a single uh, way to confirm uh, the need to undelegate de the domain, and if the competent organization has already confirmed that and you trust the competent organization, maybe you can automate that period and, and save time there. And uh, remove the registrant or registrar. No, the registrar is responsible, is ultimately responsible, and all the uh, costs will be incurred by the uh, registrar. Uh, I don't know if we can share our responsibility with the competent organization or oh, liability. It's very easy to register a domain, and I understand why uh, registrars and registries need it. The more domains, the better for everyone, including criminals. But maybe, uh, well, they know how to automate things, so let's learn automation from from them. Of course, I wouldn't want to be their accomplice. A question to everyone. Do we want to change the principles of domains, registrations, and uh, disabling, disconnecting, de-delegating the domains? Maybe we need to um, have universal automation of, for the decision to undelegate to be taken not by a competent organization and not by a registrar, but by, say, artificial intelligence. Anna Karakhanian, your microphone, please. You see, all government institutions in Armenia, do you know who um, protects those uh, hosting uh, providers? They do it themselves. They said that the National Security Service, a government agency, a law enforcement agency, is willing to offer its protection service, security services to hosting providers. So is my understanding correct? There is National Security Service that 
готов будет сама оказывать услуги. They want to offer all the services themselves, and uh, that's how they want to get rid of uh, uh, malware. No, there is an option called locked by authority. There are domain names that are locked by authority. Others can change the domains, and uh, they, you need to get uh, an authorization from uh, the government agencies to unlock them. Oh, okay, that's common practice, I understand. But as to undelegating, that's a huge challenge, and uh, we even established a special commission. Grigori is the uh, head of this commission. Uh, he's our manager. Uh, there is an algorithm that this commission follows. We receive a report or some disclosure and uh, screenshots as evidence. Well, what we are trying to do is first give a warning to the owner of the domain Maybe the owner can rectify the situation. We can uh, give the owner a week or two to address the issue. And if it's fixed, no, Andre, I understand you're smiling, but it's a problem for us. We can't. Uh, on the one hand, there is the pressure coming from our lawyer who says that, no, we don't have the right to undelegate. Then what do we do? And the police just says, hand the case over to us because fishing is a crime it's it's a crime so it means that there is no job for us andre yes yes please the registrar uh, had a comment another registrar had a comment but to reduce the time, to significantly uh, cut uh, the time uh, on handling the uh, blocking request or de-delegation or undelegation request, uh, well, it's really in the hands of the uh, competent organization. If you would provide uh, evidence, then uh, there wouldn't be a lot of delays. Well, that's exactly why we're saying it. The average response time, as I was uh, on yesterday, you also had uh, this information in Guinness presentation, it's 22 hours. We, we can share our expertise. You can invite us uh, to, uh, to your workshop or something. We'll share our expertise. We can share our best practice. Yes, this uh, autumn, uh, exactly, yes, this autumn, uh, every November, we hold a meeting of all registrars and competent organizations will be, we've been holding this event for the past five years, so uh, you're welcome to talk at this event. Dmitry, I think you raised your hand and you wanted to join the discussion, right? No, not really, but uh, yeah, if you, I'm given the floor. Again, if you have any additional questions, please write to me. I mean, if there are any issues or problems in, uh, with evidence or anything, please, or if you want to learn more about uh, specific uh, fraud schemes, just uh, you know, let us know and we'll share the data with you. Okay, then I will summarize the session. And a quick comment from our active uh, online listener who's been with us yesterday and today, Maxim uh, sent another comment. Uh, Maxim, thank you very much. Thank you for all your uh, comments. And if uh, there is time during the session, your comments are read out. It's just that some of your comments didn't look like questions and they were more like statements, but speaking about automation of everything and the automation of uh, undelegation process, if registrars are removed from the chain, if there is police or if uh, some other third party does the anti-legation, then, uh, then uh, the agreement is between the end user and the registrar and under this agreement and the money under this agreement, you know, the, the money and the liability, the penalties, the fines, uh, they will uh, fall on the registrar. 
I'd like to thank all the panelists. And uh, the main takeaway from the session, as uh, I see it, is we need to try to cut the response time. We are improving on our latency year on year. It's not happening as fast as we'd like it to happen. The criminals are ahead of us. Their automation is better. Then let's think about our automation. A large registrar has just shared the information on how many people they have uh, to uh, process all these uh, reports, and we're all already losing. The, she said, "What was was it?" Uh, he, one of the panelists said five, six thousand uh, uh, rubles is the cost of one fishing site. So um, for us, it costs the same, probably in terms of uh, labor rates. Uh, or maybe actually we are paying more. Maybe every incident costs us five, seven, um, ten thousand rubles. Let's um, do the sums. So again, uh, maybe we should make the registration process harder. Um, on day zero of this conference, uh, we talked about it, you know, connecting to the identification authorization systems, not only of the .ru, .rf, .su uh, domains, but in other countries, they, they also have uh, national systems of authorization identification. It's the black mirror, you know, we need to count every single person hosting the same same, same, the same in Russia. The hosting providers will have to authorize their clients via the national government identification authorization system. That's the general trend. So at this point, I would like to close session six. We talked about time, we talked about money, and we talked about challenges of all stakeholders. I'd like to thank everyone. So once again, uh, session six is closed. Now I'd like to invite Andrei Vorobyov to the microphone. Andrei is the director of CTLD.ru. Okay, so the main takeaway is let's talk first about TLD. Um, Andre, do you think that uh, we exhausted our agenda? What about the program uh, committee's performance? Uh, were the topics discussed relevant? I have already received some feedback from colleagues, from colleagues who've been listening to the conference here in the Republic of Karelia, but from the perspective of the program committee, how uh, would you rate yourselves? Well, of course, it's up to the participants to rate us. Um, everyone who attended this conference as a uh, participant or as a speaker, this year the program committee as a community of experts uh, that offered recommendations on the program, recommended speakers and uh, topics uh, for the sessions worked uh, rather efficiently and uh, many of our suggestions were accepted and included into the program and many of the speakers who we nominated were actually invited to speak and uh, made presentations here. Yes. Uh, one more time, I believe that it's up to the uh, audience uh, to evaluate our performance, to rate us. Uh, I uh, hope very much that the conference uh, will again take, pl take place next year. And uh, the uh, uh, membership of the next uh, conference will be good evidence uh, to the quality of today's conference, this year's conference. All the technical glitches that we had during the conference, I'd like to apologize for them. Oh, the bugs, the bugs, okay. The bugs, no, we're right, bugs. Uh, the technical glitches, right. Uh, but I believe 
that they were within uh, tolerance limits. Thank you. We did our best. On behalf of all, of all participants of the conference, on behalf of the organizing committee, I'd like to thank the program committee. Um, you worked um, exceptionally, and the program committee begins its work again uh, the next day after the current uh, conference. Um, I believe the competent organizations were actively involved in the conference this year, and it's um, something we need to uh, preserve for uh, next year. It's a best practice that we need to take on board, and there have already been uh, suggestions about our partners from other countries that we need to extend this positive experience to neighboring countries. I think it would be a good idea, but in any case, uh, it's something that we can discuss uh, at TLDCon next year. And Another feature of the 16th conference was the educational track. I've just been uh, to the administration of the Petrozavodsk uh, uh, municipality. I've just talked to Elvin Chukov from the Legislative Assembly of the Republic of Karelia. And I know that uh, the conference uh, was attended also by the deputies of our parliament, and they also have suggestions and proposals as to how we can organize the zero. Yesterday we started, we launched uh, the School of Mentors. Uh, our project is called um, Study uh, the Internet and uh, govern, govern It. Um, 2023 is the year of teachers and mentors in Russia, and uh, we plan to provide trainings in different regions of the country uh, to the tutors, to the um, t to the parents as well um, to for them to learn how to be you know anchors uh, in terms of internet governance literacy in their locations and since we initiated this project here in Karelia we already received 50 requests from the teachers the first 50 teachers will be trained in October, in December, they will be receiving um, documents uh, of advanced uh, professional uh, training. So this will be another good um, good uh, um, takeaway from this conference and the contribution of our conference. Well, Andrei mentioned uh, involvement of competence organizations, well, it's not the first time, like Group IB and now uh, FACT, I don't know how, how to pronounce the name of the uh, company, the Bizone, and other competent organizations. Traditionally, they have always attended our session on security uh, for many years. We'd like to thank them. They have always been uh, strong contributors to the program. So we did not have a dedicated session on communication with the competent organizations. But in uh, any case, they have always been contributors with the content and to the program. You know that uh, we we used um, we used to um, present the next location of our conference at the end of the current conference. So we will definitely organize our next conference offline, well, in a hybrid format, uh, definitely. As to the venue, the potential venue, there is a choice of them. And we are looking at uh, Russian cities. Artis, the registrar, uh, has been uh, inviting us to Kaliningrad for many years now. Then there is Minsk also. Minsk has uh, often applied to host uh, TLDCon Tashkent in Uzbekistan. They also uh, uh, what, well, we I remember um, there was a nominal uh, host because uh, the, the conference, um, uh, when they were hosts, uh, was held during the pandemic. Uh, we'll, we'll see. We'll see uh, where our next conference is going to take place. But um, there will definitely be a, a day zero and the educational track. One other takeaway of this conference is the signing of the agreement between the Coordination Center and the Petrozavodsk State University. Uh, we 
вот. plans to sign this uh, agreement already in summer and uh, during the days of the conference we held a signing ceremony uh, but what's important really is that uh, we have already read the first lectures to the students of the school of physics and the school of law and economics under this agreement and the cycle of lectures uh, th this will be a permanent feature in the curriculum of the university and we hope that the students will now uh, contribute uh, uh, to uh, to the project uh, of uh, universal acceptance of IDNs in Russia. Um, so again, uh, we welcome students. We'd like to thank Maria Kolesnikova and Vadim Mikhailov. They are, uh, what, what are they? They're volunteers. They're not just volunteers. They are the spearhead of the Podjerzhvara project. Uh, we'd like to thank all the partners. Yesterday at the reception, uh, Evgeny Kuskechev said that it's wonderful to see our IPN among the organizers of this professional and industrial conference. But how can we be without, uh, how we, we can't envision ourselves without our IPN. They have always been at the cradle of uh, the whole, uh, you know, uh, industry or the whole movement. Uh, do you remember the Villarn uh, tradition, the Kurchatov uh, institute? The traditions because uh, this is where RUNET uh, started. That was the cradle of RUNET, basically. RUNET, the oldest registrar, TCI, the register, uh, GTLD, or GTLD domains, and MSKIX, the infrastructure operator. So I'd like to thank all the um, sponsors and organizers of the conference. We'd also like to thank the listeners uh, for uh, finding an opportunity to come here. The atmosphere of this conference um, uh, is, uh, is so friendly because there is an opportunity to uh, talk to each other face to face. Uh, uh, the conference offers plenty of opportunities for socializing, networking. Uh, I believe that both uh, presentations and also offline communications and uh, evening uh, our uh, evening events uh, they all. Uh, uh, they, they all made a significant contribution into advancing our agenda. I would like to thank also the administration of the Petrozavodsk uh, municipality. Uh, the, um, uh, 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 later in the day, uh, we will be uh, taking a tour uh, of the city and uh, the deputy head of the administration of the Petrozavodsk city, Natalia Karmazina, uh, was the first to believe that uh, the organ organization of the conference will, will be of sterling quality, and she helped us arrange all our meetings and to organize the educational track. So, we'd like to thank absolutely everyone and see you at TLDCon 2024.